Are you ready to go into the wild with the E A G E A G? See them mangrove there, protect them. When you walk with your things, don't left them. Look out for the birds and the snakes, don't scare them. We're going. Funding for this initiative was provided by the Sandals Foundation, dedicated to preserving the environment and teaching future generations how to care for our precious Caribbean islands and their natural resources. Hello everybody, welcome to Into the Wild with the EAG, our virtual field trip experience. My name is Shanna Challenger and I'm the Offshore Island Conservation Program Coordinator with the Environmental Awareness Group, or EAG. I'm Nathan Wilson, the Invasive Species Officer with the EAG. And I'm Brittany Hay, the EAG's Wildlife Officer. In this virtual field trip experience, we will be taking you through the extraordinary ecosystems found right here in Antigua. We'll be learning about the do's and don'ts of visiting our very special offshore islands. And all the animals who make Antigua and its offshore islands their home. So gear up and get ready for a fun-filled learning experience that allows you to connect with nature like never before. Let's go! For our first trip, we'll be taking you to somewhere we all know and love, our majestic offshore islands. But before we can visit the offshore islands, there are a couple of things we have to do. Let's take a look at what they are in your activity booklet. It's time to do your biosecurity checklist. Step 1. Shake your bags out. Check the insides and the pockets. Make sure there are no holes. Make sure all your belongings are well secured and pack food into sealed containers. Step 2. Clean your shoes. Check your socks and the soles laces and tongue of your shoes for dirt and seeds. Make sure they're properly cleaned before leaving for the offshore islands. Step 3. If you're camping, check your tents and sleeping bags for any seeds, dirt or eggs as well. Once thoroughly shaken out, seal them tightly in a bag for the journey so that nothing can get into them again. Step 4. Finally, whether you're traveling by boat or by helicopter, be sure to check them before leaving the mainland. The offshore islands are a special place and we don't want any small critters to store away. Why are we doing all of this? Because of invasive species. Invasive species are animals or plants that are brought into an area where they don't belong who then harm plants and animals who live there. The most common invasive species that harm our offshore islands are rats and mongooses. By checking ourselves and our belongings before visiting, we keep our offshore islands free of invasives. Even after completing our checklist, if we see any signs of invasives on the way over to the islands, we must turn around and return to the mainland. That's why it's so important to be thorough when completing our checklist. We do not want to be disappointed. Once we've completed our checklist, we're ready to start our journey. Antigua and Barbuda has 51 offshore islands. Each island is unique and supports many different species. One very important word that can be used to represent all the different species that are on our offshore islands is biodiversity. When we say that our offshore islands are biodiverse or have a lot of wildlife, we mean that there are many different types of plants and animals that live there. Most of our offshore islands are located on the northeastern side of the island in an area called the Nema, 
or the Northeast Marine Management Area. Everything within this area is protected by law and should always be used in the best interest of our environment. Here is where the EAG does most of its work. The island we'll be visiting today is Great Bird Island. It's among the largest of our offshore islands and supports a variety of wildlife. Before stepping onto the island, make sure to check your boat and belongings one last time. We have to be absolutely certain we are not bringing any invasive species with us. Once we are absolutely sure we have brought no invaders with us, we can finally get onto the island. Let's go! Let's take a minute to appreciate the beauty of the island. Our offshore islands are home to many different species. If we stay quiet and listen, maybe we can hear some. I think I can hear them. We want to know what you hear. Turn to activity two of your booklet. Close your eyes and listen. One of the things I was able to hear were birds. Let's go see if we can find them. There are many important species of birds that can be found on our offshore islands, such as the protected brown pelican, the vulnerable West Indian whistling duck, and the national bird, the magnificent frigate bird. These birds are considered native birds since they choose to live here with us all year long. But wait, there's more. Native birds that live on the offshore islands have company at certain times of the year when other birds from overseas visit them during the winter. These are called migratory birds. Some migratory birds are ospreys, belted kingfishers, and ruddy turnstones. Whether they live on our offshore islands or are temporarily passing through, all birds are important for keeping our environment healthy and clean. They eat pests, help to spread plant seeds, and pollinate flowers, and Get this, their poop adds nutrients to the soil which helps plants to grow. Because birds are so important to us, we have to make sure to keep their homes spotless. Birds may eat litter like plastics that we leave in their environments and die. Maintaining a healthy environment is crucial to keeping our local birds happy and encouraging migratory birds to continue to visit us. But birds aren't the only wildlife that can be found here on our offshore islands. There are reptiles here too. The offshore islands are home to three species of lizards found nowhere else in the whole wide world. First up is the shy Watts tree lizard, a small brown tree lizard that loves to eat ants. Then there's the large spotted tree lizard, which loves to perch in trees. The male lizards of both species can often be spotted puffing up their necks to show other lizards which areas are their homes. Lastly is the chubby Antiguan ground lizard, which has a red nose like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and gets very fat on the offshore islands because of how much food they have. They feed on thousands of insects, but won't think twice about snatching your food if you're not paying attention. The most special reptile that lives on our offshore islands is the critically endangered Antiguan racer. We say this snake is endangered because if we're not careful, the entire species could disappear forever or become extinct. This is a huge deal because this special snake is endemic to our offshore islands, meaning that they can be found nowhere else in the entire world. These snakes are difficult to see a lot of the time because of how well they camouflage or blend in with their habitat. Actually, they can usually only be spotted when they move. 
Luckily, we brought with us today an expert on these super special snakes. Hey everyone, my name is Andrea Otto and I've been monitoring wildlife with the EAG for over 15 years. I've been helping them study the very special Antiguan racer and I'm excited to talk with you about it today. But first, we need to find one, so let's go. We have to look really carefully if we want to find a snake. Stepping carefully and being alert is extremely important and is really helpful. Lizards make up most of the diet of the Antiguan racer. Fortunately, they are plentiful on our offshore island. Here we go. <laughs> Excited. Here we go, we've actually caught a snake. It's inside this bag, so I'm going to carefully remove it. And by carefully, I'm going to make sure I know exactly where its head is. That would be down here. Because the snakes are very good at escaping. So there's actually a leaf in there. So I'm going to remove the snake and you're going to get your first glimpse of one of the most famous snakes in the world. Isn't she beautiful? We know this is a she because of her coloration and her beautiful pattern. Every time we catch a snake, we take very important information about them. We collect a lot of important information about the snakes. That's what all of this equipment is for. So the first thing we have to do is find out if we caught the snake before. Normally, if we've caught a snake, we're going to give it a little ID tag, a little ID tag. They don't have necks, so we don't put them around their necks. We're going to put them under their skin, just in this area where their vent is. So in order to check, we're going to read the snake's ID tag by using the scanner. And if you look at my scanner, you're going to see numbers. So that's a special ID for the snake. And this means that we've caught this snake several times before. Once upon a time, the Antiguan racer was found all over Antigua. But invasive species like rats and mongooses were brought to the island and ate them until eventually the only Antiguan races left on Earth were on Great Bird Island. The snakes on Great Bird Island were still in danger from rats, however. About 25 years ago, the snake population dropped so much that only about 50 snakes were left. Fortunately, the EAG and our partners have worked very hard to keep invasive species, including rats and mongooses, from coming back. And today, the Antiguan racer has a population of over 1,200. But that's not all the good news. You can now find these special snakes on four of our offshore islands instead of just one. This was really important because we want to make sure that there are enough snakes across all our offshore islands so that they can be around forever. A creative masterpiece you will make. It's time for you to make your own Antiguan racer snake. Turn to activity three of your activity booklet. I can't wait to see what you've come up with. The Antiguan racer has been through a lot, and although the EAG does its best to ensure that their numbers never get that low again, our snakes are still threatened today by people who destroy their habitat and kill them out of fear. Not to mention those pesky invasive species who continue to be a problem for our snakes today. Let's go to the beach to learn more about these troublemaking species and why they're such a big issue. To teach you more about invasive species, we brought with us two of the EAG's invasive species monitors. My name is Sahami Smith. And I am Sean Lee. And we are the Offshore Island Invasive Species Monitors. Why are invasive species so important? 
first off they compete with the local population of animals for food and eventually there's not enough food for everyone and so the native species eventually die off from starvation. Various species also end up ending up feeding on native wildlife causing us to lose our unique species of plant and animals. They even eat plant seeds preventing vegetation from growing. Just think about how many animals eat plants. I'm sure you can see why that is so dangerous and also the importance of our work to keep these island invasive species free. All these are reasons why it is so important to be extra careful not to encourage invasive species on our offshore islands. There's too much at risk. As invasive species monitors, our role is to make sure that mongoose and rats do not make it back onto the islands. We check bait stations every five weeks for signs of rats and we put rat poison or rat bait into the boxes. And we can't forget that invasive species aren't the only thing harming our offshore islands. Sometimes we are too. Thousands of people visit our offshore islands every year for picnics and for whatever reason. They don't always take the garbage with them. We all have to be sure to take our glitter with us when we visit our islands. Our island must be welcome to humans and animals alike. Remember the old time saying, cleansiness is next to godliness. And to me, our purpose on earth is to take care of it. Now that you're an expert on invasive species, let's take a look at activity four in your booklet. Read the instructions and get to work on your poster. I think it's time to catch those pesky invasives. Okay, we just learned a lot about how our offshore islands support land animals like snakes, lizards, and birds, and how these animals are threatened by people and invasive species. Now, it's time for us to recap all the species you've learned about. Turn to Activity 5 in your booklet and complete the word search. When leaving the offshore islands, it's important that we take everything we brought back to the mainland with us. Leaving things behind could attract invasive species like rats, impacting the animals who call the islands their home. That's why it's super important that you leave nothing behind. If you are on the offshore islands and you happen to notice signs of invasive species, call the EAG at 462-6236 to report what you've seen. Well folks, that's it for this episode of Into the Wild with the EAG. We hope you enjoyed being on the offshore islands today as much as we did. Until next time. <laughs>